ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Daryl Larson. I come before you to share a message from the great activist and novelist Peter Matheson. We asked him to give us an overview of the environmental abuses of the Bush administration. The damage to the environment, in effect, to our human habitat, caused by this Cheney-Bush administration, is inseparable in origin from those other transgressions under discussion in this inquiry into impeachment. How tragic it seems that a century of accelerating progress in environmental education, legislation, and public awareness have been blocked, stalled, derailed, and twisted back toward the past by the greed of the great corporations and their bot politician, this vice president and his pet president in particular. The hard-won environmental protections are still mostly in place, but their implementation and enforcement under Bush-Cheney has been gutted by epidemic weakenings of standards and brutal deregulation for political advantage. Unhappily, this travesty of good governance comes at a time when true leadership is needed as never before. In terms of sheer calamity and human suffering, climate change by global warming with its storms, winds, floods and fires, drought and famines, dislocation of whole regions, epidemic disease and civil wars will be far more terrifying than terrorism and endless too. The foreseeable future, in fact. Yet with our world already in the shadow of catastrophe, these false patriots in the White House have shamefully failed, indeed betrayed, their country. Setting aside the national interests they were sworn to uphold in favor of corporate welfare for big oil and other gross polluters, abetting them wherever possible in exploitation of fossil fuels while impeding the research and development of the wind and solar energies which would slow and perhaps mitigate the world disaster that, as responsible scientists worldwide now agree, is already well underway. How fitting it seems that the great summit meeting which codified Cheney-Bush collusion with big oil was held in Cheney's own White House offices. The so-called National Energy Initiative of May 2001, from which environmentalists were effectively excluded, and whose machinations remain unlawfully withheld from public scrutiny. It is known, however, that White House cronies from Enron and Exxon played a prominent role in the villainous decisions which awarded the energy industry an astounding $27 billion worth of public subsidies and tax cuts, tax cuts and doled out less than $1 billion for research and development of clean alternative energies, such as wind and solar. Recently, Bush Cheney stated that this country will be in Iraq for many years to come. Can there be anybody who still seriously doubts that this oil-steeped administration invaded Iraq for the main purpose of controlling its vast oil reserves? Or that, until this imp imperial ambition is accomplished, thousands more innocents, our young troops, and uncounted Iraqis will be maimed and die? President Kennedy's father once said something like, the brain of the American businessman is the most overrated commodity in the nation. I feel profound outrage that our great land should be despoiled without mercy, vision, or good sense by narrow, narrow people who still hide their lust for profits behind their so-called duty to their stockholders. How about their duty to their countrymen and to the common good? Are Bush and Cheney and their sponsors untroubled by the stunted future they are ensuring for their own children and grandchildren? Or do they assume that all their money will buy them immunity in the world tragedy to come? It won't. Peter Matheson, 121407.